To define a function, we start with the keyword def, which is short for define or function definition. Here you can see we have a few code snippets. The first one is for defining a function. So just press enter. So here's the basic syntax. We start with a function name, like increment, now press tab. In parentheses, we define parameters, if they exist. In this case, let's add a couple of parameters, like number and y. So we want to increment a number by a given value, right? Also, you can see this line is terminated by a colon. And right after that, we're using indentation to specify the body of this function, just like our if and for classes. Now we can call this function like this. So increment parentheses, give it a couple of values like two and three. Now note that when I save the changes, you're going to see two line breaks after this function. So save, there you go. So we have two line breaks because that's the style that pep8 defines. So we should always have two line breaks after our functions. Now these functions by default return the none or null value. So even though we don't have a return statement here, this function is still returning a value. Let me show you. So print the return value of increment and run the program. Look, we get none. Now let's return a value like number plus by. Run the program again. Now we get five, beautiful. In Python, unlike many other languages out there, we can return multiple values from our functions. We simply put them in parentheses. So here we add parentheses. Let's say we want to return the original number as well as the updated number. So number, comma, number plus by. Now let's see what we get when we run this program. So run it. So in parentheses, we get two, which is the original number and the updated number. What is this? This is what we call a tuple, which is basically a read only list. So earlier in the course, you have seen lists like numbers. We use square brackets, one, two, three. This is a list. We can add new objects to it. We can remove existing objects. A tuple is like a list, but we cannot modify it. So we cannot add new objects to it. We cannot remove existing objects. Now, to convert this list to a tuple, we use parentheses instead of square brackets. Okay, delete. Another useful feature we have here is called keyword arguments. So currently, if someone looks at this code, they may not be able to tell what exactly these arguments are for. We can use keyword arguments to make our code more readable. For example, here, we can prefix this second argument with something like this, by equals. Now we can read this code like plain English, increment two by three. So this is what we call a keyword argument. It's just a way to make our code more readable. Also similar to a lot of languages out there, we can assign default values to these parameters. For example, we can set a default value for the by parameter. So now we don't have to pass a second argument here. And when we run this program, the value of by will be set to one by default. And one last thing before we finish this lecture. Earlier I talked about type annotation or type hinting. We can use that feature in our functions as well. So here we can annotate these parameters as well as the increment function itself. So here we add colon int or integer. And here also colon int. And finally, for the function itself, before this colon that terminates this line, we need to add an arrow, and then we'll add the return type of this function, so integer as well. Now, in this case, we have a red underline here because I annotated this function to return an integer, but I'm returning a tuple. So more accurately, this should be tuple. Save the changes, and the error is gone. 